Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at how you take a regular twist drill and turn it into a high performance drill for wood. Now this grind is called a spur bit or a brad point bit. Of course the brad would be referring to the point in the center um, that, that helps to stabilize the drill as it sets down into the wood. Normally the brad is longer than the tips, but sometimes, well, you can grind these all kinds of ways. Here's an example of a bunch of drills that I've ground over the years uh, for different jobs, each one probably for a different job, and <laughs> there's so many that they almost fill up a whole drill index now. Uh, and you can see that they're all slightly different, but the idea is the same, that the there's a spur that um, that inscribes the circle that you're cutting so that it can't break the wood. And if you do a really good job, not only will it ex enter the wood correctly without hurting it, it'll also exit the back side of the wood if you're drilling a through hole without damage. Okay, so we're going to go to the grinding wheel and make this look like that. Okay, we're going to use a aluminum oxide wheel and this one uh, has an angled shape on it, but I'm going to dress it to a round shape right now.
Okay, so let's talk about where we are now. So I've completed the roughing of the material. Uh, I haven't gone out to the full diameter yet. Uh, still a little chip of original drill point left here. And the center is uh, it's thin, but it's not sharp yet. Uh, additionally, we have to make sure that there's enough clearance. So, in other words, when the drill rotates through the wood, there has to be a clearance angle. In other words, that would be no clearance. This would be clearance so that the drill can screw into the wood. And um, to some extent, the amount of clearance that you give the drill uh, governs how quickly it can penetrate the material. This drill I'm grinding for a pal who is uh, making a big uh, <laughs> a couple of hundred holes in um, mahogany posts that are going to be a, a fence around a deck and he, he, so he needs a lot of uh, a lot of holes that are the right size <clears throat> to fit the, um, the tubing they're going to use. Anyway, so that's the job. And now we're going to go back in there, uh, clean up the wheel with a dresser to uh, expose sharp grains and finish it off with a final grind. Well, this looks pretty good. Um, oh, I might uh, mention that this is a high quality drill. It's made of high speed steel, so called high speed steel. Uh, and that, that means it's an alloy of steel that is insensitive to being what would be for, you know, our chisels and knives and plane blades overheated. In other words, um, it's very, very difficult to spoil uh, steel like this with extra heat. And so I've been able to grind aggressively and generate pretty high temperatures as evidenced by some of the coloring you're seeing um, that would not be advised uh, on a tool that was not made out of high speed, so-called high speed steel. So let's, um, let's put it in a tool and see how it works. So here we have um, an AB comparison of drill as supplied on the left side here and drill as modified on the right side and I've got a, a old piece of hard white oak and we're going to put this in there and we're going to do this in the milling machine 
to give the drills every chance to perform properly. The milling machine, of course, is rigid. Um, and we'll give the drill a chance to do some whatever, whatever good work it can do. So we're going to run this at maybe, I don't know, 1500 RPM. See how that works. A lot less pressure is required with this drill. And you can see when it leaves the work, it releases this little half a bagel of white oak. It's kind of impressive. And when you look at the other side, so here's the side that was done with a regular twist drill. You can see that uh, actually I didn't go through all. I didn't go th all the way through this, but you can see the damage to the surface. And over here on the drill that we just made. It's lovely. And then finally, um, we can tell by putting our fingers inside that actually both holes are pretty good. But this one, I don't know if you can see, but on this one that we did, it's a little shinier inside. I don't know if you can see that. Both holes are pretty good quality, but it's entrance and exit that are problems and also um, pressure that you need to apply. So this is, uh, in wood, uh, an inferior design to a brad point or spur bit. This is a funny size, it's 2364, correct for the job, correct for the tubing they're using, and um, wouldn't be, I mean, although these things are available, you can buy them pre-ground from suppliers, I don't think anybody's gonna sell you one that's this funny size. So anyway, hopefully some of you will be able to solve some drilling problems with this and get better holes. By the way, this little donut here still has all its finish on it and is unbroken. Pretty cool.